for my sustained then never pusbanjali, my heart like flowers thousands and thousands of times, at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Gurudev, Asmadeya Paramarada Tama Guru Pada Padma, Anitilila Parvishta Om Vishnu Pada Stotra Satasi, Rupanuga Charivarya, Sila Bhakti Vedant Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Yeah. Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. Yeah. And finally, I offer my pranam to all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. Vanchakal Paturu Vastra, Kapas Ndokwe Avatsa, Paditanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnavi Pyo Namono. This is better for the okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, now sit. Okay. And don't move. <laughs> for ninety minutes. Please give me your full attention. I am nothing. Only I aspire to be dust at the lotus feet of my Gurudev. When my Guru Pada Padma used to come to a place, arrive there on the first day, then first of all he would speak about Guru Tattva. In this path of pure bhakti there are many tattvas or metaphysical principles, spiritual principles that we ha must understand like Jiva Tattva, Nam Tattva, Maya Tattva, Bhakti Tattva, Leela Tattva, Rasa Tattva. However, first and foremost is Guru Tattva. If we can realize the nature of Guru Tattva, then all the other Tattvas become open to us. Yasya Devi Prabhakti Yatha Devi Tathagaro Tasyaiti Katita Yata Prakashante Mahatmana For one who as he is devoted to Krishna equally hmm, he has equal love and devotion to his Gurudev only to that great person is the mystery all the secrets of the Vedas revealed they manifest in his heart spontaneously so the only way to know the tattvas is to first understand Guru Tattva and become satsisha, a bona fide, authentic, eternal disciple of a bona fide, authentic and eternal Guru. Mm -hmm. This is the process. <laughs> if a person fails to comprehend Guru Tattva, then they will fail in everything. Srila Krishna Skaraj Goswami Pad has said, Krishna Guru Bhakta Shakti Avatar Pakash Krishna Echai Rupa Karina Bilas See Krishna himself, the Advaya Gyan Paratattva, the non-dual supreme reality, is eternally playing in six features Krishna, Guru, Bhakta, Shakti, Avatar, Prakash these are the supreme absolute truth taken together they are inseparable if one tries to worship Krishna but without worshipping Guru or without worshipping the Vaishnava if you remove any of the inseparable elements of the absolute truth they all disappear So Sri Krishna said, Pratamantu Gurum Pujam Tatastaiva Mamachanam Korvam Siddhima Vapnoti Hyanyatani Shvalabhavet. Krishna himself said, First of all, worship your Guru Dev. After that, then you worship me. If you do this, you become a Siddha, a perfected soul. Otherwise, all your devotional activities, they'll be Nishval, no fruit at all. Wasted. 
directly in the drain. So, Guru, Krishna, Guru, Bhakta, Shakti, Avatar, Prakash, Supreme Lord Himself, Krishna, His avatars, His Prakash expansions like Balaram or Nityananda Prabhu, His pure devotees like Shiva's Thakur, His Shaktis like Gadada Pandit or Radharani, hmm? and the Guru Tattva, they are all part of the transcendental reality. So the Krishna Skavaraj goes on to elaborate a little about Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru. Yadyapi Amara Guru Chaitanya Radas Tatapi Janiya Ami Tahara Prakash. He said, Although I know that my Gurudev is the servant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Radas. Gurudev is a Vaishnava. But, Tata Pijanya Ami Tahara Prakash, at the same time, I see that my Gurudev is a Prakash of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Prakash Bhagra is Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Prabhu is Akhanda Guru Tattva, the undivided original Guru Tattva. So where the power of Nityananda Prabhu is manifest in a pure Vaishnava in this world, then that is Guru Tattva. So Guru is one, that is Nityananda Prabhu. But he may manifest his power through his very near and intimate pure Vaishnavas. And then that becomes from, there is the Samasti Guru, that is the wholesale full undivided Guru Tattva, Nityananda Prabhu, that is called Samasti Guru. And then there is Vyasti Guru, the individual manifestations of that Guru Tattva. So you have to see in this way. Guru Krishna Rupa Hiya Shastra Pramane Guru Rupa Krishna Kripa Karin Bhaktagani All scriptures are saying Guru Krishna Rupa the spiritual master is one form of Krishna. The spiritual master is that form of Krishna through which Krishna distributes his mercy. In his original form, Shama Sunda, Tribanga, Lalit, in Vrindavan, this form is not going to come to you and distribute any mercy. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> it's just not happening. Hmm? But Krishna himself in another form Welcome, that is Gurudev. So, Sakshat Hari Tvena Somasta Shastra. Gurudev is Sakshat Hari, directly Hari. Kintu Prabhu Yapri Evatasya Vande Garoshi Tarna. But he is also dear devotee of Krishna. So, you should see like this, both at the same time. Hmm? Gurudev is a pure Vaishnava, and same time, one form of Krishna who has come to deliver you from this world. Hmm? Not, don't think that Gurudev is a Rishi or a sage or even a very learned pandit or even an avatar of Krishna who is a partial avatar like, uh, like Narasimha Deva, Karma, Varaha, Matsya. No, you should see that Sakshat Hari, that Gurudev is a pure Vaishnava and same time that very Krishna who is the Purnatama, not complete, not more complete but most complete. Not Purna, Purnatara, but Purnatama, Brajendra Nandan, Shama Sundra Vrindavan, that very person also manifested this form before me to bring me to Galok Vrindavan. So, Guru Krishna Rupaya Shastra Pramani, Guru Rupe Krishna Kripa Karin Bhaktagani. If you don't have this vision, if you don't hold this Sraddha, Faith, Vishwas, Vishwas, Vishwas means confidence, V means special, Swas means breath, the br that which is the breath of your bhakti. When you have a Guru Nishta, complete faith in Gurudev, then your bhakti can breathe, Vishwas, you are alive. <laughs> and if you don't have Vishwas, that means the faith in Guru, Guru Nishta, then you... Uh, run out of breath and become exhausted and cannot do any bhakti at all, you can do karma, worldly activities, only 
trying to get comfortable and make more money to get more comfortable. <laughs> huh? And wasting this very precious human form of life. So, Diksha Guru is Krishna Rup. But then Srila Krishna Skaraj Goswami Pad, he's saying, Shikshu Guru Keta Jane Krishna Raswarup Antaryami Bhakta Shasta Eidui Rup. The Shiksha Guru is called Krishna Swarup. <coughs> Krishna Swarup. So, the Diksha Guru is called Krishna Rup, the form of Krishna. And the Shiksha Guru is called Krishna Swarup. What does Swarup mean? Hmm? Swarup means also form, but Swarup also means nature, the character, the characteristics. Hmm? So, the meaning is this, that the Diksha Guru acquaints you with the beautiful form of Krishna hmm? through the Gopal Mantra and Harinam. Hmm? How beautiful is that form of Krishna? Venum kvananta dalaya taksham bahavatam samasitam buddha sundarangam kandarpa koti kamaniya vishesha shogam Govinda Mari Purusham Tamam Majami Playing his flute decorated with peacock feathers. You can realize the beauty and the sweetness of Krishna's form by mercy of Diksha Guru. But that Krishna, he has so many moods. Sometimes he's in the mood of Dirudat, very bold and arrogant hero. Sometimes in the mood of mm, and Dirudhata, very he heroic and brave and courageous, saving the bridge buses from the reign of Indra. Sometimes he's in the mood of Delalit, playing like Kamadev. Hmm? At that time, he's completely controlled by the love of Radhika and eager to serve her, to massage her lotus feet and please her in every way. So this is a, these are different aspects of Krishna's Swarup, his character, his nature. So Diksha Guru acquaints us with Krishna Rup and Shiksha Guru acquaints us with Krishna Swarup. Diksha Guru is called Krishna Rup and Shiksha Guru is, is called Swarup. It's very, very deliberate because is there any difference between Krishna's form and his personality? No, though you may realize them in a sequence, but actually there's no difference. So just as there's no difference between Krishna's form and Krishna's qualities, so similarly there's no difference between Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru. So if you make a, a discrimination, you discriminate between the Diksha Guru and Shiksha Guru and see that they are completely different tattva, that they are not, one is transcendental but the other is not, or so on, like this, by making this uh, discrimination against one or the other, then you're making offense, which is similar to making a distinction between Krishna's form and Krishna's qualities. It is aparad. It is offense to the transcendental reality. So, if uh, one can be guided by Krishna's roop in the form of Diksha Guru, and one can be guided by Krishna's roop in the form of Shiksha Guru. Hmm? But it's still Sri Krishna. Krishna's mercy coming in different ways. Especially if our Diksha Guru will leave this world, then for sure that Diksha Guru will appear and speak to us through Shiksha Guru. So, and continue our education. Chakudano Dilo Jai, Janme Janme Prabhu said, He opened my eyes, is my Lord birth after birth. So if Guru Dev will leave this world, hmm, if he's your Lord in your next life, even then why not in this life also? Hmm? So Janme Janme Prabhu say means hmm? it's in, in a hundred dollars, ten dollars is included. So if if you if he's your guru lifetime after lifetime, then if you leave in this life, he'll also be your guru in this life. Hmm. Understand? So hmm, Udavji, he said, Naiva Upayacha Patichim Kavayastavesha, Brahma Yushari Kritam, Mridha Mudas Maranta. Anta bahistanur britam ashudavan vidunvan acharya chaita vapusa 
Swagatim Vyanakti. Because we're explaining the verse. Shikshu Guru Keita Jani Krishna Swarup Antaryami Bhakta Shrasta E Dui Rup. Shikshu Guru has two forms. One is Antaryami Krishna in your heart. And Bhakta Shrasta, the best among the Vaishnavas. So those who are the highest and most realized, the perfect among the Vaishnavas, they are Shiksha Gurus also. So Shiksha Guru is Krishna in the heart, Antaryami Bhakta Shasta. So Uddhavji is saying here, Anta Bahis Tanu Britam Tanu Van Vidun Van Acharya Chaicha Vapusa Swagatin Vyanakti. He's saying, Oh Krishna, the great transcendentalists, the spiritual poets, they cannot express their gratitude to you. Even if they glorify you in choice poetry for billions of years, for the whole life of Lord Brahma. Hmm? Why is that? Because, oh Krishna, you are so kind that you appear in two ways. In, inside, as the Chaitya Guru and outwardly as the Shiksha Guru to guide each living entity and bring that living entity to your lotus feet. It may be that now you cannot feel it, what Uddhav is saying. But when you arrive at Sri Krishna's lotus feet, then you will understand. Because the lotus feet of Sri Krishna are more dear to the devotee who realizes him. When the devotee arrives at Sri Krishna's lotus feet, then he sees that the lotus feet are more dear to him than 10 million of his own prans, 10 million of his own lives. And then he realizes, oh Krishna, I can never repay you. Because at that time when I was in avidya, in ignorance, and floating in this material world, fully identifying with a bag of meat and engaged in sense gratification like a pig in a farm. Hmm? At that time you came to me in two forms, as Paramatma in my heart and as my Shikshi Guru outwardly and took me out of this mess and this catastrophe and this disaster. And now I'm here in Goloka Vrindavan. Oh Krishna, I can never repay him. <laughs> yeah? Understand? This is Guru Tattva. Guru is Krishna Rupa and Krishna Swarup. Now one may say, what is the need to undergo the inconvenience of meeting directly with a spiritual master who is living in this world and taking shelter there and receiving instructions which may be very difficult and inconvenient and make obstacles to my comfort and relaxation. <laughs> <laughs> it's very complex and difficult. Better to just have a guru who is in a book or on a tape or in a video. It's more merciful. <laughs> Not give me any difficult instructions. But at least if he gives a difficult instruction, he puts an instruction to someone else on the tape, not to me personally. Yeah. So one may say like this. So in the, in the explanation of this verse, Srila Krishnas Kavraj Goswami is saying, Jive shakshat nahitate guru checha rupe shiksha guru hoye krishna mahanta swarupe. It's very important. You see, people can say, when someone asked Srila Prabhupada, Oh, when you, when you die, then what will happen in the future? Srila Prabhupada says, I will never die. I am living forever in my books. But there are three things, Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. So Guru means the spiritual master whom you meet and gives you personal instruction. And Sadhu means the other pure Vaishnavas who are helping you, to help you understand your Guru and teach you how to serve him in a way which is Mano Bhishta Seva, fulfilling his innermost heart's desire, because perhaps you may not have caught that. So the Sadhus help you understand your own Guru and serve him really in a way which is pleasing. Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. Shastra means the written records of the realizations of great sages. So even though a pure devotee is in this world and he speaks and his teachings are written down, then when he leaves, this written teaching is now in the category of Shastra. Hmm? It's in the category of Shastra now. 
cannot say this is I am having sadhu sangha. Hmm? So that there are three. Otherwise, all the three categories they'll collapse into one. Here's a book, Guru Sadhana and Shastra. Then why have three? So, Srila Krishna Skaraj Goswami Pad is saying, Jeeva Shakshat Nahi Tati Guru Chaitya Rupe. It means because the conditioned soul cannot directly perceive Guru in his heart. Hmm? When Guru doesn't die, the Prakat Guru who is manifest just becomes Aprakat, unmanifest. Hmm? But when he becomes unmanifest, a conditioned soul cannot. Uh, now contact he cannot experience him in his heart he can pray but in his heart he cannot jive sakshat sakshat means direct experience because he cannot see because he cannot contact the guru in his heart therefore shikshu guru hoy krishna mahanta surupe krishna in his heart comes out in the form of the mahanta guru now this word mahanta guru is very important mm. Every great spiritual master is called a Jagad Guru. He is the Guru of the whole universe, for sure. But when he becomes unman, and he may be Mahant Guru also. That means if there's a mat, if there's a temple, and there's one Guru, he's in charge of that place and all the disciples there. So he's called the Mahant. But when that pure devotee leaves this world, he becomes Aprakat. He becomes unmanifest. He's still Jagad Guru. He's still the Guru of the universe. But he is no longer called Mahant. Because the Mahant is the person who is sitting on the Gadi, on the position of the of Acharya, at the time in that mat or that temple or that institution, that organization. So the word Mahanta Guru is very important. Krishna's Karaj Goswami is using here. It is the Acharya who is present. Hmm? So he is saying, because the conditioned souls cannot contact, they cannot realize, they cannot perceive, Krishna in the heart, the Chaitya Guru, or the Acharyas who have become unmanifest, therefore Krishna appears as a manifest Acharya. Hmm? You can see directly. You can ask a question. Your questions can be answered and your doubts can be removed. And if you are doing something wrong, he can catch your ear and say, don't do that, do this. And bring you in the right direction. Hmm? So that is called the Mahanta Guru. So once Prabhup our Prabhupada Srila Bhakti Siddhansa Thakur, he was asked, a question related to Christianity, but he connected it to all our spiritual life in, in principle. He said that if someone says that they will follow Jesus Christ, is that possible? Because Jesus Christ has ascended now, he's become unmanifest from this world. Prabhupada Bhaktisthan Sotakur said, if a person uh, tries to follow any great teacher or acharya who's become unmanifest, then it can become the cause of many anarthas, many obstacles. Why? Because the conditioned soul has four defects, including the cheating propensity, hmm? imperfect senses, the tendency to make mistakes and be in illusion. So he will not receive, he will not take the message as it is, but he'll tend to twist it and he will deviate. He may even do the exact opposite of what that guru really wants him to do and so on. So therefore the Mahanta Guru, the form of Krishna who is physically present, present now in this world and guiding us, our guardian, we should be in Anugatya. Anugatya, under their guidance. And then we can go straight, in a straight line towards our goal without deviating here and there. Hmm? Understand? Hmm? What are you doing? Hmm? How are you train praying for Krishna? By spending all your time protecting cows, establishing Varnashram Dharma, constructing temples, doing collecting money, all of these, there are so many services and it's good. But if you only become absorbed in these things and you forget what you are doing here, what is the point, the purpose of our Sampradaya? I was just in New York. So I met with my good friend Satyarajan. He was reminding me of a nice pastime with my Guru that took place in New York. What, it's the Bhakti Center, then it was in the charge of uh, Kirtananda Maharaj at those, at those days. So my Gurudev was there and many devotees were coming to see him. So this devotee, 
he had written and printed a book, a nice, very scholarly book, and the book was on the subject of reincarnation in all of the different religions of the world. So he came to my Gurudev and he bowed down. He sees him as a shiksha, he's a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, but he saw my Gurudev as his shiksha guru. And he presented, I have made this book, it's about reincarnation in the world's religions. So then my Gurudev looked at it. Then he said, don't become angry. I'm speaking just for your benefit. I just want to ask you a question. Would Rupa Goswami have written such a book? Sometimes Christians have this saying, you know, what, when they're in some situation in their life, they say, what would Jesus do? Yeah? So my Gurudev was very much like that, like, what would Rupa Goswami do? Yeah? You remember, Srila Prabhupada has written in his introduction to the Nectar of Instruction, this Krishna Consciousness Movement is going on under the auspices of Srila Rupa Goswami. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadama Yam Dadati Swapadantikam This mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a mission to fill the heart's desire of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the heart's desire of Mahaprabhu was revealed to us by Srila Rupa Goswami and that is to attain Braja Prem to glorify Radhika and to attain the position of her eternal maidservants like Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari and others This is our goal so if our hearing, our chanting and remembering is not focused on the attainment of this goal, then it means we have started to wander off into some vague peripheral aspects of devotion. That our parampara, they never appeared for these things. Hmm? So, Srila Bhaktisthan Sotako is saying, that when we have the guidance, the shelter, we're in the anugatya of the Mahant, the pure Vaishnava is physically present here, then oh, we can know the essence of spiritual life and go. Be fully aiming at that and attain our perfection because time is short, life is very short. We don't have time to lose, time to waste. So Srila Prabhupada, Bhaktisthan Sotako, he said very humbly, he said, for example, I am here in Navadvipa. And I have a chance to drink the fresh water eh, of Ganga. Where does this water has come from Gangotri? And a weak and insignificant person like myself, without any resources, I have no power to climb the Himalayas and go and drink this sweet water at the source, Gangotri. But fortunately, there are these riverbanks and these riverbanks so kindly have guided this water down from Gangotri hundreds and hundreds of miles and they've brought this fresh, sweet, transcendental water to me here. If these riverbanks had not guided this Aprakita Vastu, this transcendental Ganga, right to me here and now, then where would I be? Perhaps if the riverbanks were there, it would have gone here and there and before it reached me, the bed would become dry. And I would get even not one drop. Or perhaps I would be searching here and there in some uh, putrid, stagnant streams and lakes and drinking that water thinking that it was, was the Ganga. So in the same way, when we are under the Anugatya, under the guidance of the Mahant, uh, the pure Vaishnavas who are physically present in this wo world, they are, they are like the banks, bringing the fresh and sweet Ras Amrita, coming from the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, Srila Vishnata Gitakur, Srila Bhakti Nautakur, Srila Bhakti Stansu Thakur, my Gurudev, and delivering it to us. Because we had no power to go there. So they have brought it to us. Only those who are very fortunate have the chance to associate with such pure devotees. Those who have been blessed by the mercy of Gornitai. Without the mercy of Sishi Gornitai, we cannot even recognize who they are. Srila Krishna's Kavraj Goswami part, he said, 
दुई भाई हृदय रोग शलि अंधका दुई भगवत संगे कर्ण साक्षत का saying the mercy of gonitai is like a light which dispels the darkness of the heart and when the darkness in the heart has been dispelled then just as when you turn on the light in a room you can see the objects in the room so when the mercy of gonitai dispels the darkness in a devotee's heart then they can recognize two things and they meet directly two things dui bhagavata sange karna sakshatkar one meets two types of bhagavat two types of bhagavat ek bhagavat bara bhakti ras shastra ara bhagavat bhakta bhakti ras patra one of those bhagavats is grantaraj shrimad bhagavat hmm? you see in other sampradayas everyone respects the bhagavat purana but they don't give a special position this is the vishnu purana the padma purana hmm? baraha purana hmm? all hari bangs purana all these puranas are there they're all important only shri chaitanya mahaprabhu has revealed no nothing is equal to shrimad bhagavatam hmm. bhagavatam has achintya shakti hmm? sajuri tabru de tat kit bi susur sabit tachanat only when you desire to hear shri mad bhagavatam from the lips of a pure devotee then sri krishna comes and appears in your heart and he's trapped there and cannot leave tat chanat means in that moment and tat chan chan to what chan also mean mohots of festival then because the shri mad bhagavatam is so ecstatic even for krishna that when you begin to listen to shri mad bhagavatam from the lips of a pure devotee Krishna doesn't want to miss this and he comes and he sits down in your heart and he's listening to you. He thinks, "Oh, Hari Krishna festival. I'm not going to miss this." Yes. Hmm? So Srimad Bhagavatam has achintya shakti inconceivable potency to give prem. Hmm? But it must be received from the Bhakta Bhagavat. So one Bhagavat, ek Bhagavat bara bhakti rasa shastra ara Bhagavat bhakta bhakti rasa patra the other bhagavat is the devotee who is a rasa patra the cup full and overflowing with rasa all the time ras coming out here and here everywhere <laughs> from every pore of his skin ras is only ras is coming out <laughs> so that is rasik vaishnava if we hear from them then dui bhagavat dwara diya bhakti ras tahara hridaya tara prema hoya vash Krishna Skaraj is Goswami saying by the combination by the action of these two bhagavats together then one's heart becomes infused with bhakti rasa and then Krishna becomes under your control Krishna Ishwara Parama Krishna is supreme controller but this rasa is so tasty Krishna is addicted kif 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 and he becomes now under your control mm-hmm. so this is the process of spiritual life it must uh we must be in anugatya and the guidance of diksha guru and shiksha guru and one must hear bhagavatam from the rasik vaishnavas there is a stages or degrees of hearing sri the jeeva goswami part calls this the optimization optimization of the hearing process hmm? so hearing means any contact of the sense of hearing with the words describing krishna's naam roop gun parikar leela name form quality is associated and past that so in any way you hear it's auspicious but it's better if you hear some prabandha prabandha means an essay hmm? some literary composition written by a pure devotee this is better hmm? and better than this is if you hear a pure devotee live reading and explaining that prabandha hmm? these are the stages it's explaining bhakti san sandarbha hmm? but better than this is hearing shrimad bhagavatam because even if someone writes some prabandha it can it's very good it's transcendental but hare krishna shrimad bhag please understand <laughs> i take straw between my feet and give pranam to you again and again and do your parikrama 108 times 
Srimad Bhagavatam is not like any other scripture, eh, anywhere. It is Krishna's own Vanmayi Murti, sound incarnation. And O Brajara, Krishna Bhakti Rasa Swarup, Sri Bhagavata Sarva Veda Shastra Parama Mahatma. It is Rasa Swarup. So hearing Srimad Bhagavatam is even better. And better than that, Jiva Goswami is giving the gradations of superiority, optimization of hearing. The best thing is to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam from the lips of a Rasik Vaishnava. Then it's more powerful. So we're not saying that reading books or discussing with other devotees, we're not making it black and white. It's either this or nothing. Uh, either hear from the lips of a pure devotee or not. No. Anyway, read, yourself, recite, recite among your friends and associates. It's all wonderful. But there is degrees of potency in these activities. So hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, the best scripture, from the lips of the Bhakta Shrestha, the best devotee, is the best hearing. Mm? But there's something more than this also. <laughs> uh, now you... The wheels are turning. <laughs> what is that? Smoke is coming out from the ears. <laughs> Overheating. Huh? Yes, something more than that. Why? Because you, you can hear the pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj from Srimad Bhagavatam, from a pure Vaishnava. Very good. Wonderful. But what if your path or your relation with Krishna is not like Prahlad Maharaj's mood? So the best hearing is to hear the pastimes of Krishna in Srimad Bhagavatam, which are the pastimes of the associates whose mood you want to attain from the lips of a pure devotee. Mm. So we want to hear no, Venu Geets, Pranay Geets, Gopi Geets, Yuga Geets, Pranay Geets, the words spoken by Radhika and Gopis of Brindavan from those pure devotees from Srimad Bhagavatam. That is Uttam Uttam, best of the best. Now one may say, but I can record it. Someone recorded such katha like this. And I can hear this recording. But it's not the same. You see? If you are, if you are cold, and you have a book about fire, <laughs> you will still be cold. <laughs> but someone may say, but I can listen to a recording of a fire. <laughs> <laughs> or I have, a, I have a DVD of a fire also, I put on my flat screen TV. <laughs> uh, but what will happen? You will still be cold. <laughs> uh? So, only when you are in the presence of a pure Vaishnava, in whose heart there is a fire of separation, from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm? Shri Nartam Das Thakur, he said, Guru Prema Rasana Vay Se Saranga Jai Vadu Vay Se Rabi Madhav Antaranga. Grihe Bhava Nati Thakke, Ha Ha Goranga, Ha Ha Goranga Bole Dakke. I don't care if someone is Grihastra or Sanyasi or anything. But if someone ha Guranga is crying, Oh Sachinandan Gohari. Oh Kunj Bihari He Radhavala Pranavala Radhika. Oh King Kari Vatsala Radhika. You are very kind to your maidservants. If someone is feeling separation, Srila Natam Dastakur says, I want his association. Because you, now you're sitting next to the fire of separation and the heat will start to burn you also. Mm -hmm. So direct, separate, direct meeting with pure devotees and hearing from them is essential. It is essential. And by the mercy of Gornitai, one can recognize the greatness of the book of Bhagavatam and one can recognize that devotee. It may be for many years you never even met such a devotee. But maybe you have met, but you could not recognize and when the mercy of Gornitai illuminates our hearts, then we see, ah, this is the book, Bhagavat, and this is the person walking, talking, breathing, singing, dancing, Bhagavat person. And then by the association of two, this Prema Bhakti can come in our hearts. So because in that sound, the quality of the sound, 
is different. When pure Vaishnavas speak, this is not material sound. Mm -hmm. It is not the Nasik Vayu. You know, when a person who has not realized Krishna speaks, then this sound is a Nasik Vayu. That means the air, Nasik his nose, the air that went in his nose is now coming out of his mouth. But when a pure Vaishnava speak, then this is Goloka Vrindavan Bhavu. This is the air from Goloka Vrindavan. And that air is carrying the dust of the lotus feet of Krishna. And if they are Brajrasi Grupanuga Vaishnavas, that air is carrying the dust from the lotus feet of Krishna mixed with the kumkum from the breast of Radhika. And when we're touched by that kumkum, then the Anurag, great anchoring, awakens. Do Daiva Mitrisha Mihajan in Anurag. Alas, why am I not feeling Anurag eagerness? Hmm? But when we're touched by that Kunkum, the cosmetic, the anurag from the breast of Radhika, carried on the, in the breeze of the air of Goloka Vrindavan, coming in the Ar Harikata, spoken by pure Vaishnavas, then that intense hankering is awakened automatically. Even if you don't understand anything, even if you're sitting in the room, you don't know anything. Just the air is touching you. After some days or some years, You'll see very soon this love like Braj Gopis begins to appear. So powerful. So, Krishna himself described to Uddhav about Shabda Brahma, the speciality of the sound vibration of the Vedas coming from the heart of pure devotees. So that's our subject today. Here's the verse. We can chant this verse together. Are you ready? Sa esha jiva vivara prasuti prane na goshe na guham pravista mano mayam shukshma upeja rupam matra svarovan iti pravista Now we've completed our introduction, upagram of the class and we'll begin the class. <laughs> Please pay attention. This verse is full of Siddhanta, very deep Siddhanta, but the context in which it appears in Srimad Bhagavatam is very, very astonishing and full of rasa. So this verse is overflowing not only with tattva, hmm? tattva Siddhanta, but also rasa tattva, rasa Siddhanta. So we'll try to touch from far away, I give pranams from far away to the nectar of this verse. See Krishna, this is 11th canto. Very soon he will discover his unmanifest pastime and then disappear from this world. And just before Krishna is leaving, Uddhav is receiving instructions from him because Krishna has told Uddhav, you have to stay. Uddhavon Vapinam, you know. Hmm? You have to stay in this world. And although I am leaving in this form, I will stay in the form of your speaking Srimad Bhagavatam. So, in the course of Sri Krishna speaking to Uddhav, here in 11th canto, in chapter 10, Sri Krishna is describing the futility of the life of sense gratification. Hmm? The sense gratification is futile and uh, the heart is never satisfied and ultimately one becomes bound up more and more in this material world. So, Sri Krishna instructs Uddhav that for auspiciousness in a person's life, they should follow the rules and regulations of Dharma, of Varna and Ashram, and everyone should do their duties in such a way uh, that they're thinking this is for the, um, for the pleasure of God, and they should not aspire for the fruit of their work. They should not be working, doing their duties to earn something or have any self-interest or reward. They're just doing their duty without attachment. And by this they can gradually become purified. That was in chapter 10. And then in chapter 11, Sri Krishna described, spoke about Sadhu Sangha and different levels of Sadhus. 
Then he came to this chapter 12. And in this chapter 12, Krishna, because he was in his mind, different levels of devotees, and he was explaining about the qualifications of higher and higher and higher devotees. So, well, where does that lead? Hmm? Where does that go? Brajagopis. So the remembrance of Brajagopis actually is always in Krishna's heart. Hmm? But most of the time, in this, in this Leela, this point, he's hiding it. But now he cannot hide it any longer. And he began to describe the glories of Braj Gopis to Uddhav. Tanna vidamaya no sangha badha swanam dia samatmanam atastatedam yathamunayo yathasamado mudiyabdithoye nadya pravishta eva nama rupe. O Uddhav, the Braj Gopis have fully given their hearts to me. Their intelligence, their buddhi is like a wish-fulfilling cow that only fulfills my wishes. They've forgotten themselves completely. They've forgotten their own bodies and minds. They've forgotten their own names even. Hmm? Just like a sage, when he goes in samadhi, he forgets his external identity. Gopis have forgotten completely who they are because their hearts are just completely absorbed in trying to please me at every moment. So Sri Krishna said, Rame nasadham maturam pranite sopalkina maya nusakta chitta O Uddhav, when Akrura came to Vrindavan, he took me and Balaram, Ramayana Sadam, he took myself and Balaram to Mathura. That means Krishna said, I didn't want to go. I never wanted to go. But he persuaded Balaram. He told Balaram that his father, Vasudev, Krishna is not thinking Vasudev is his father. Nandamaraj is his father. <laughs> But Balaram's father, Basuda, he's suffering so much in the prison cell of Kamsa, you have to come. Krishna has to come and help him. So I didn't want to go. And even hearing Akrur, I didn't want to go. But he persuaded Balaram and Balaram said, let's go. I could not refuse Balaram. <laughs> My Dao Bhaiya. I'm not saying that. <laughs> so Ramayana is Adam. Maturam Pranite. So Parokina Amaya no Saktarada. Vigada Bhavina Namevi. And at that time, Krishna said to Uddhav, when I left Vrindavan and I went to Mathura, then Braj Gopis' hearts were so deeply absorbed in me that they could not anywhere in the world see any other source of happiness at all. That's why Krishna's name is Madhu Sudan. Madhu means happiness. And Sudan means one who cuts. If you have a loving relationship with Krishna, he'll cut all possibility of happiness in your life. You'll have to suffer so much. <laughs> Don't listen to Harikata. Quickly go before it's too late. <laughs> you can protect... Oh, uh, my, my brother is calling me. <laughs> so, Krishna said to Uddhav, the gopis were suffering intensely and they could not see any other source of happiness. Yugaitam nimaishena chakshusha pravrishaitam shunyaitam jagat saravam govinda virahena Mahaprabhu in Radhabhavi saying tears are falling from my eyes like rain in the, in the monsoon season. One moment seems like thousands of years and the whole world seems completely void, empty, desolate wasteland. Without Govind. Without my Shamsund. So Krishna spoke this. And then Krishna said, Uddhav, the best process for a person in life is to leave all Dharma. He spoke of us very similar, like Sarodhama and Paritaja, Mame Kamsha. Leave all Dharma and just surrender to me. Hmm? So then when Uddhav heard this, 
he became somewhat confused. So, he posed the question to Krishna. He said, Oh Krishna, I cannot understand. Your instructions have not fully, they have not come together in a consistent way within my heart. Can you explain again? Just summarize this teaching that you have given. Now Udav is very rasik. He is very qualified. So he knows how to ask questions in a very mm, rasik way also. You see, he was not asking one question. It sounds like one question. But he was asking two questions. The first question was this. Before, in chapter 10, you told me about the futility of sense gratification. And that the best thing for a person to do is to follow Varnashram Dharma, and, but without any attachment to the fruit of their activities. And now you just said, the best thing to do is to leave all Dharma and just surrender to you. So it seems like a contradiction. So Krishna is hearing the question of Uddhav. But Krishna's heart is also very Gambhir. So Uddhav has two questions and Krishna is also hearing both questions. Uddhav's second question is this. You said, hmm, dadrishu sukaya, that when you left Vrindavan, then the Braja Gopis, they did, they did not, they could not see any source of happiness anywhere. Hmm? Now, Uddhav is very, very intelligent. Uddhavo Bodhisattama. She showed Brihaspati Sakshat, his direct disciple of Brihaspati, the guru of the devils. He's Krishna, Vrishni Nam Mantri, he's Krishna's own advisor. When Krishna is not sure what to do, he'll check with Uddhav and take advice. How intelligent is Uddhav? So when he heard this word, Dadri Shu Sukaya, they did not see any other form of happiness. This verb is in the uh, perfect past tense. That means that they did not see any other form of happiness is now a completed past activity. Which means that they're, now they are seeing some form of happiness. They didn't then, but they are now. Do you understand? I'll illustrate a little bit more. When Krishna sent Uddhav from Mathura to Vrindavan in the first place, he held the hands of Uddhav and he said, Dharayanti achikritschena praya pranam katanchana Pratyagamana sandesha balavo made madatnikaha. Hey Uddhav, the gopis of Vrindavan, with great difficulty they are holding on to their pran. They feel so much pain of separation, they are about to die. But with great difficulty they are holding their pran, they are staying alive. Why? Only because I sent the message, Ayasyaiti Dautukai. Don't worry, I will return. Hmm? So they are thinking, if we die and Krishna comes back and sees that we've died, then he'll be very sad and we cannot allow Krishna to be sad. So even though we're suffering somehow or other, we have to stay alive. So Dariyante Krishna, Praya Pranam Katacha, somehow they hold on to their pran only because of my promise. So here the verb Dariyanti, they are holding. It's in the present tense. Krishna speaking to Uddhav and right now in the present tense gopis are there in Vrindavan and they're uh, all trying to stay alive somehow or other. Hmm? But now Krishna is saying to Uddhav, hmm, Dadrishu Sukaya, they did not see any source of happiness, means that that period of suffering is over. And Uddhav is confused. How could that period of suffering be over? Mm. I've been with you the whole time. I was with you in Mathura and I've been with you in, in Dwarka and here we are. And the gopis are there in Vrindavan. How, 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 why are you saying that they're not suffering anymore? Using the past tense here. Hmm? You see? So two questions simultaneously came in the heart of Uddhav. And because it's the nature of rasa. Hmm? Rasa hi gupta. 
Wrath should be hidden. It should not be expressed outwardly. Hmm? Krishna has said, hmm? Prakshavada, Prakshavada Vedo Yam Balanam Manushashanam. In the Vedas, all the Vedas only describe me, but in an indirect way. Prakshavada Rishayaha, Praksham Mamachapriham. See, Krishna said the Rishis, the Rish, who are the Rishis? Shuk Rishi, Shukadeva Goswami, Narad Rishi, Rupa Rishi, Rupa Goswami, they are the Rishis. So the Rishis, they speak Parokshavad indirectly, not directly. Krishna said, Praksham Mamachapriyam, the indirect explanation is more dear to me. Tad Brajastriya Asrutya Venu Gita Smarodayam. Kaschit Paroksham Krishna Syas was Sakit Ban Bhavanayam. Shukadeva Goswami said, when Krishna was in the forest playing his flute and gopis were in their homes, they heard the sound of his flute and intense desires to serve Krishna were inflamed within their hearts and they began to speak to each other but Parokshavad. Not direct. They didn't say, I love Krishna. Do you love Krishna? <laughs> they said, no. You know, when Krishna and Balaram go into the forest and play their flutes, all the trees are trembling. The birds close their eyes. Huh? Like this, they talk about the trees, the birds, they never talk about their own love. Huh? They're hiding their feeling. And throw Balaram into the mix there as well, just to hide the fact that they're only in love with Krishna. Like this. So, Gopi speak Paroks, those are of Rasa, they never speak directly, indirectly. So, the masters of Parokshavada are Prajagopis. Prajagopis say, Ma, Ma, Prasha, Krishna, don't touch me, don't, don't touch me. Don't, don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> so, gopis are the masters of Parokshvad. Hmm? So, the rishis, great Vaishnavas in this world, they speak in this way, it's very pleasing to see Krishna. So, just as Krishna has spoken in this way, an Uddhavas heard and two questions came in his heart. By Parokshavad, Krishna wants, Uddhav wants to ask two questions, but he's making it look like one. And hiding the Rasik question about the gopis in his question about, hey, you told to do karma first and now you're saying surrender and just give up all karmas and dharmas and just serve me. Huh? Like this. So, Unless we sit at the feet of pure Vaishnavas, we cannot enter, you'll see only tattva, tattva, tattva in the conversation. Those all Rasik can bring out the, all the Parokshavad which is hidden there. So, so Krishna, he gave reply and Krishna is also Rasik. So he answered the one question of Uddhav, which was actually two questions disguised as one question. So Krishna gives an answer, which is uh, two answers disguised as one answer. <laughs> and he's answering his question on Siddhanta, and in that hiding the answer to the question on Rasa also. Hmm? And so the answer is this verse. You want to learn about the verse? Yes. <laughs> We're trying to create some interest, <laughs> some fascination for Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam. So, here, Krishna is saying, Sa Esha Jiva. Hmm? He, this um, Jiva, Bivara, Bivara means uh, like a, a hollow or a hole, a space, a place. And prasuti, prasuti means manifested or born. You know, like a maternity ward is mm. called prasuti ghar. Mm. Huh? Prasuti ghar, maternity ward. So prasuti means born or manifest. So bivraha prasuti, that jiva, bivraha prasuti. Uh, so here actually, the word jiva means the Supreme Lord Himself. Because He's the jiva, He's the life of everyone. So here jiva doesn't mean the soul. Here jiva means who is the soul of the soul. Who gives life to everyone and everything. So that Supreme Lord, Bibara Prasuti, is manifest or appears in one place hmm, and that is called Guham. Guham. Guham means secret place, Pravista means entering. Entering in, he manifests in a very secret place. That secret place, it means Mul Adar Chakra. The Mul Adar Chakra. So, you may know 
that in the body there is a chakra system. So the Mul Adar chakra is the lowest chakra system. So, Pranena Goshena. Pranena. In the Goshena means in the form of sound. And sound is manifest in its subtling, subtlest form on the level of pran. Pranena Goshena in the Mul Adar Chakra. So the most subtle level of sound is called para. And it begins as a small vibrational movement of pran in the Mul Adar Chakra. Hmm? And then it go usually the Shushumna Nadi is blocked for most people. Yogis they they do the pranayam to bring their pran into the middle to open the blockages in the um, Sushumna Nadi. We don't need to do any of that stuff. You just hear Harikata, it will all happen spontaneously. <laughs> That's what Krishna is explaining here. This is the best yoga. Listening to the loving Pastai Radhamada of Kunj Bihari. Nikunja Lila of Radha Krishna, don't worry, this is, that's real yoga. Radha Krishna yoga. So, Pranena Goshena, the Supreme Lord, in the form of Gosh, in the form of sound, appears on the level of Pran, Guham Pravista, in the Mul Adar Chakra, Mano Mayam. Then, it moves up to the Manipurak Chakra. Hmm? Swadhisthan is missed out here. The next level of sound is in the Manipurak Chakra. And that sound, first para, and then this level of sound is called pasyanti. And pasyanti is manomayam. It's on the level of m mind. Hmm? And then, you see, because even before you speak, first you, uh, you're about to speak. And then you have to formulate how the words will be done on the mental level before they come out from your mouth. Huh? So... Of course, for some people, the sound comes out of their mouth without involving the mind. <laughs> but that's another story. <laughs> so, then sound comes to the level of the mind, and that sound is called the uh, Pasanti, and it is Manomayam, in the um, Manipurak Chakra. Shukshmanu Paitra root Pam, then it makes a subtle form. Shukshman Rupa means a subtle form, Upetyam. He attains. He attains a subtle form in the Anahata Chakra. Anahata Chakra. Hmm? Now you can hear Anahata. The word Hata means struck. So if you if you strike something, if you strike something, a sound comes. So that's called Ahata. That is called the Ahat Ahat struck sound. It is struck. So there's another kind of sound. Even when you speak. Uh, the pran is coming up and it makes air strike against your vocal cords. And by the movement of your vocal cords, then the sound will take different forms of vowels and so on. Mm -hmm. So, a a i i u u, kachatatapa, kachatatapa, gayananama, yaralava, sasa, like all the Sanskrit vowels, they come by the blockage of the sound, of the air coming up through the vocal cords. So, <coughs> but. There's a type of sound which is not a hat sound struck, it is anahat sound. Sound which is not produced by any striking or anything. And that is the sound of the Vedas appearing in your heart. Hmm? So in this level, this is on the level of buddhi. The sound purifies your buddhi in anahata chakra. And that level of sound is called the madhyama. And then it goes up and comes to the vishuddhi chakra. And from the Vishuddhi Chakra, the next level of sound, on the level of your senses, now that level of sound is called Vaikari. So, sound has four levels. Para, Pasyanti, Madhyama and Vaikari. And they appear on the level of the Pran, Manas, Buddhi and Indriya. You see? And this is why tape recorder cannot catch Shabda Brahma. Because a tape recorder has no pran, has no mana, has no buddhi and no indriya. <laughs> Understand? What has pran, mana, buddhi, indriya, everything? Only a living pure Vaishnava. So when we are in the presence of a pure Vaishnava, their transcendental pran, aprakrita pran, the aprakrita buddhi, the aprakrita manas, the supernatural transcendental pran, mind and intelligence is Go, manifesting all the four levels of Shabda Brahma. And when we are touched by this, then our prana, our manas, our buddhi, our indri, all become purified. 
Right. Understand? So we're discussing Guru Tattva and the necessity of a Mahanta Guru. And th- we're giving some Praman now from discussion between Krishna and Uddhav. So when eventually it comes up to make Matra, Swara and Varna. So Matra means, in a mantra, there is the Matra means the, the duration of sound. Uh, so some letters are long and some are short. Hmm? Krishnaya, Govindaya, some of the letters are long and short in a mantra, so that is the matra. Then uh, swara means intonation, Vedic mantras have intonation. And uh, then varna, the actual syllables themselves. Itista vistaha, itista vistaha means myself, the Supreme Lord, I am situated in the form of the syllables of the Vedic mantras. So Krishna is describing how the Shabda Brahma appears in this world. First to Lord Brahma and then in Parampara from Lord Brahma to Nara to Vyas to Madhvacharya. And like this it's coming down. Mm. Like the banks of the river bringing the Ganga to us. Mm. The Mahanta Gurus are giving to each generation. So in this way, uh, Krishna is answering the Uddhav's question. First you said, do your dharmas and don't be attached to the result, then you said surrender everything. So Krishna answering. And the answer is, look, in, in, the, in between that, I spoke about Sadhu Sangha. So that means, if a person has no Sadhu Sangha, they should do their Dharma without attachment to the result, and offer the result of their work to me. But if a person has Sadhu Sangha, and they can hear directly, they can come in contact with me in my transcendental pastimes in the spiritual world through the hearing process. Then, Sarava Dharman Prichaja, Mame Kam Shanam Braja. Forget all of those time consuming and uh, difficult uh, things which are related to the body and mind, and bid your soul fully surrender to me. Because you will realize me in my spiritual form through the process of hearing, chanting and remembering. And you will receive your own spiritual form and you will serve me. That is your Jaiva Dharma. That, that other Dharma is Dharma of body and mind. That I am saying to give up. Because by Sadhu Sangha and hearing Harikata, the sound vibration is me personally. You will enter into my pastimes and serve me. That is Jaiva Dharma. So the Deha Dharma of this world is only relevant as long as you have no chance to enter into the Jaiva Dharma, the Dharma of your soul. Then it should be given up like vomit. So, Krishna very beautifully has answered Uddhav's first question. But what's the answer to the second question? Same verse. Same verse is the answer to the second question. Uddhavji's second question is, Krishna, before you told me how gopis were suffering holding on to their life, and now you described how when you left they were suffering, but they, they could not see, they did not see, you used the past tense, which means that you're implying that right now all the gopis are happy. But how are they happy? You're with, I've been with you the whole time. And with you now, how can the gopis be happy in separation now? Their love could never have been broken. It's not possible. So what's the answer Krishna said? Sa'esha jiva vivara prasuti. Now it has another meaning. The meaning that I have explained so far, this meaning has been revealed by Sri Swami, the original commentator on Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, those who don't follow the Swami, they are prostitutes. Though Sri Daswami is not even in our Sampradaya, he is in the uh, Rudra Sampradaya, uh, of Vishnu Swami line. But still, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very much loved his, the most ancient and original, authentic commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam is Sri Daswami. And what, in ev- whichever way we comment, it should be within the parameters set by Sri Daswami. Mm? We have great respect for him. So our Jiva Goswami has mm, explained Srimad Bhagavatam more, but within those parameters. But he's also our Jiva Goswami, the incarnation of Vilas Manjari, very near and dear to Radha and Krishna, has re- revealed Srimad Bhagavatam on a depth, on a level, which is never seen before in this day of Lord Brahma. So he's explaining that Krishna is answering the second question again with one verse. The meaning is this. Hey Udav. Sa Esha Jiva 
I am the jiva, the life and soul of all the bridge passes. Vivara prasuti. Vivara means some contained place, some contained or inaccessible place. Hmm? And prasuti means manifest. So here the word vivara means Udav, my aprakat lila is going on eternally. Aprakat lila, you know, Krishna has two types of lila. Aprakat lila, unmanifest pastimes is going on all the time. Hmm? But only once in a day of Lord Brahma, in the reign of Vaivasvata Manu, the seventh Manu, in the 28th cycle of ages, at the end of the Astavings Chatur Yuga Dwapar Erashesh, in the end of the Dwapar Yuga of the 28th cycle of the seventh Manu, once in a day of Lord Brahma, Sri Krishna appears. But what is that appearance? That appearance means that the Aprakat, the unmanifest pastime, which is eternally going on, manifests and becomes visible to the eyes of the people of this world. So he's saying, Saiva Jiva Vivara Prasuti. Vivara, my Aprakat Lila, is manifest in this universe. So in Goloka Prandava, Aprakat Lila is going on, and there are millions of universes. And the, the Prakat, the manifest past time Krishna, is moving from universe to universe. But that Prakat Lila is a manifestation. The Aprakat Lila is coming and appearing in that universe. So, Saish Jiva Vivara Prasuti. And Krishna says, and how do I appear? Pranena Goshena. The word Gosh means sound. But Gosh also means Goshta. Cowherd village. Huh? Actually, it's a very common name in, uh, even in India today. Those who are Gop or Gopis, cowherd people, they have this surname Gosh. Right? Anyone here named Gosh? No? I, I know some devotees from India and also in America named Gosh. It's a very common name. So Gosh, the word Gosh also means cowherd village and also means sound. And, and the, those two meanings are connected because the cowherd village, it's always very loud. Hmm? Hmm? In Nandagam, the Brahmins are always doing yagyas. Swaha, swaha. The gopis are always churning yogurt and singing. Govinda Dhamo Dharamadaveti Govinda Dhamo Bulls are mooing, and, and, and the coward boys are running here and there, and they're playing on flutes and blowing their bugles and calling the cows and bring the buckets. <laughs> this is Nandagal. It's a noisy place. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's happy and shouting and doing seva in, to the cows in Nandagal. Yeah. So the coward village is called the Gosh. So Krishna is saying, Pranena Goshena. Pran means, I don't come from my Aprakat Lila into this Prakat Lila in this world alone, but I come with my Pran, with Nanda Baba and Yashoda Maya and Dhamaya and Sudam, Sridam, Dham, Vasudam, Arjun, Labanga, Stoka, Krishna, Madhu, Mangals, Vasan, Kokil, Bringa and all the covered voice and Radhika and Alita, Vishaka, Jetitapa, Kalata, Hindu, Laika, Tungi, Vinga, Radhu, Ranga, Devi, Su, Devi, Rupa, Manjari, Rati, Manjari, Chandravani and... Well, <laughs> Even Chandravali. <laughs> so, Krishna is saying, Pranena Goshena, with all these bridge buses, all the cows, the flowers and trees and Jamuna Dev and Giriraj Govardhan, they're all my pran. So, along with them, Pranena Goshena, I appear in my Prakat Lila, and then after that, Guham Pravista, I enter back into the secret place. Hmm? And my Lila disappears and goes back into the Aprakat Lila again. Uh, this is the meaning. So, at that time, Manomayam Shukshmana Upay Tarupam Matra Sarovara Itis Tavista Here, Matra means, Krishna say, Matra means senses. Like the ten Matras are called the sense objects. Matra means senses. I have transcendental senses. Matra. Swara. My words, 
my inst my words to Braja Go na pariyam nervadja samyudyam oh Radhika I can never retire you please be satisfied with your own liberal qualities hmm? the reward for having a love like yours is the love itself because there's nothing more blissful than this love hmm? so this is what Krishna's beautiful sweet romantic words <laughs> my senses my swara my varna means my Mm, my varna here means form and all of these together so this time I am situated in that but they attain a shukshma rup in other words don't think that Krishna's lila that Krishna goes to Golok Vrindavan Krishna Vrindavan is his eternal in our Vrindavan hmm? my Vrindavan when I am living Vrindavan you know Krishna never leaves Vrindavan that Vrindavan only the prakriti becomes unmanifest He's still there playing in Vrindavan, but Aprakat. So that is called the Shukshma Rup. If you go to Vrindavan today, well don't go today, because I'm here for another week. But <laughs> just come to the classes for this week. But at Kartik time, please come to Vrindavan and join us for Braj Mandal Parikrama in the month of Kartik. Uh, and then, Krishna is saying that I am always in Vrindavan in my Shukshma Rup. And Manomayam. Here Manomayam means by the Amani Namana Dahya Sada Krishna Nam Labe Braji Radha Krishna Seva Manasa Kurive. Mapu said, Be more humble than a blade of grass. Give honor and respect to everyone, and always in your mind serve Radha and Krishna in Braja. So here the word Manomayam is very significant. Because when our Acharyas say Manomayam, they don't mean imagine. It's the imagination of your mind. Directly in this verse he's saying that those devotees who are pure in their meditation, Manomayam, they experience my Aprakat Lila. So Manasik Seva is not imagination. Manasik Seva means by the advancement of devotion, one is actually serving in the Aprakat Lila internally. Seva sadaka rupena sitta rupena chatrihi. Hmm? Many people today they don't understand, they read the word manomayam and think, oh yes, Raghunuga Bhakti is all about speculating. How sit and speculate? No. Krishna is saying that it's actually an experience of my Lila, manomayam. Hmm? And all the Acharyas in their commentaries on this verse have explained it in this way. So, uh, what is very beautiful here Hmm? is that how is Uddhav answering the second question? So how is Krishna asking, answering Uddhav's second question? And that is that Uddhav, Uddhav is asking, but Krishna, I'm with you now, I've been with you all this time. Gopis are there in Vrindavan suffering, how could you say they're not suffering anymore? So Krishna is giving the answer, and the answer is this, that When Krishna was in Dwarka, he decided to go to the Rajasuya Yagya of the Yudhisthira Maharaj. So at that time, the news that Krishna was going to the Rajasuya Yagya uh, came to Braja. And Nanda Maharaj, Yashoda Miya, and all Braj is hearing this. They thought, wait. When Krishna is coming back from that Rajasuya Jagya, he will go on the road which goes uh, not on the Vrindavan side of the Jumuna, but on the other side in Mahavan, in Lohavan actually. There's a village there called Gaurai. And the road from the Yudhisthira Maharaj's palace back to Dwarka goes past this place Gaurai in the Mahav um, Lohavan on the other side of Jumuna from Vrindavan. So, if we all go there, and we'll camp on both sides of the road, then when Krishna's going back to Dwarka, at least as he's going by in his chariot, we can all, <laughs> we can all wave at Krishna, we'll see him for a moment, and we can smile and wave, and because he's probably feeling bad that we're suffering in separation, so if we come and we smile and put on a brave face and wave to him, when he's going by, then he'll feel some happiness. So all bridge buses, they came and they were camping on both sides of the road with the great hope that Krishna will come, come by. But what happened in the meantime? Hmm? 
the Dantavakra came to Mathura and his brother also Vidurata. So Krishna thought, before I leave this world, I have to, before I go back to Vrindavan, because I have promised Radharani. When Krishna met Radharani at Kurukshetra, he said, I only have two or four demons left. And when I kill them, I promise I'm coming home. <laughs> hmm? So Dantavaka and Vidurata were still left. So Krishna went on his chariot to Mathura and he killed Dantavaka and Vidurata and then he put down his weapons. You see, after killing Vidurata, that's it. Krishna never picks up a we weapon again in the whole of his Leela. You see, that's, that's why he doesn't take up a weapon on, in the battle of Kurukshetra. He's a chariot driver. Because after he, he put down his weapons, that's it. No more fighting. And then Krishna got on his chariot and he said, I'm in Mathura. And actually, Lohavan is just right across, the, 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 on the other side of Jamuna from uh, Mathura. And Krishna rode on his chariot through the river Jamuna. The water level was low and he crossed the river and he came there where all the bridge buses were waiting. Hmm? And they thought they would just wave to him as he goes by. But Krishna jumped down off his chariot and he ran and... He gave pranam to Nanda and Yashoda and they embraced him and all the bridge buses embraced him. And there was a great festival of joy. And Krishna stayed with them for, for two months. In Dwarka they didn't know because Krishna's by yoga my time stretches. So for Krishna it was two months but for them in Dwarka it was only a moment. Because <laughs> yoga maya's time is flexible. <laughs> so, see, Krishna was there for two months, but he, he saw that the separation, the pain of bridge buses wasn't completely gone. Krishna said, what's wrong? They said, you see, your chariot is parked there. <laughs> yeah? So what do you see? That you leave your chariot parked there, it makes us feel like you're going to get on the chariot and go back. And we, we just, just come back with us to Vrindavan. So then Sikhar said, all right, come on. And he invited all of his, all the bridge buses to get onto his chariot. Yoga Maya can make time stretch and also the chariot also. <laughs> so all the bridge buses got onto the chariot and Krishna began to ride the chariot across the river to Vrindavan. Vrindavan on the other side from Gaurai, from Lohavan. And as they were crossing the river, all bridge buses at the same time, Nimesh, they blinked. And when they blinked and closed their eyes, the Leela became uppercut. In other words, from the point of view of this world, they all disappeared. But from their experience, they just blinked and when they opened their eyes, they didn't know anything had happened. But they were actually continuing to live, but it was uppercut Leela. In other words, it's still going on. Radha Krishna Leela is still going on in Vrindavan now, but it's not visible to us anymore. That's the uppercut Leela. So, when Udavs asked the question, how come you're saying before you said gopis are suffering, but now they're not suffering. So Krishna said, I am the jiva, the life and soul of everyone. From Vivara, from my apricot lila, prasuti, I manifested in this world, pranina goshena, along with all my bridge buses, guham pravista. And when I went back to Mathura that time, I met with the bridge buses, guham pravista. And when they all blinked their eyes, we all went into the apricot. Leela. So I am eternally with them and in another form I came back to Dwarka. Everyone thought I was gone for just a very short time and I'm speaking with you now. But I have actually, I went back to Vrindavan and I'm with them in the Nitya Leela and everyone's happy. Uh, that's the meaning of this verse. Uh, and Krishna's answer to Udav's Parokshavad, hidden question. Understand? Now I want to say one more thing which is very, very important very important. You see, there's another meaning to this verse. Uh, on the one hand, one meaning of the verse explains how Krishna's aprakat lila manifests in this world, in this universe, and then becomes aprakat again. And another meaning of the verse is how transcendental sound appears in this world. The manifestation of Krishna in the form of transcendental sound, how he appears in this world. So, the reason is because these are two parallel ontological structures. In other words, Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, Janma Kama Chame Dibyam Eva Myo Veti Tapto Taha Chaktva Deham Punan Chama Neti Mameti Sorjuna. For one who knows uh, the, my birth and activities, my Leela 
in tattva. One who knows that my Leela is tattva. Para tattva, Brahma, the absolute truth. What is the absolute truth is not a thing. It's Krishna and his associates and his Leela, all his pastimes, all together, that is tattva. So one who knows my Janma and Leela is, my, is the tattva, the supreme truth. Janma kama chamedivyam evam yo veti tattva ta. Chak deham puna janma. When they leave this body, puna janma neti, they don't take birth again. Ma neti sorjana, they come to me. This is one meaning. But the deeper meaning is that when you realize that Krishna Leela, you realize Krishna Leela, the Paratattva, then what happens? Chaktva deyam puna janma na. Not when you take another birth, ma meiti, but as soon as you realize it, you come to me. Hmm? Understand the difference? Yeah. So as soon as you realize it, you come to me. But the question is, how do you realize the Leela of Krishna and come to Him? Just now, not when you die. How? By hearing Harikata from the lips of pure Vaishnavas. Because in the same ontological structure through which the, the Aprakat Leela manifests in this world through the coverings of the universe, of the mind, intelligence, ego, everything, and manifests before everyone here and then becomes unmanifest again in the macrocosmic universe. So in the, exactly the same way, see Krishna's Leela becomes manifested through these stages in the microcosm of the universe, your physical body and mind. You see? And that's why Krishna Nam and Harikatara is called Avatar. Kali Kalera Dhamma Krishna Nama Sankirtan. This the in the Nam Sankirtan is the Dharma for this age. And Kali 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 Krishna Nama Rupa Avatar. The Avatar in this age is Krishna Nam and Krishna Kata. So in exactly the same way, the Aprakat Leela, once in a day of Lord Brahma, becomes manifest in the universe. Mm -hmm. So similarly, our body has all the elements of the universe. It's like a microcosm. And by the same principle, when a pure devotee speaks Harikata, by the same principle, that Aprakat Leela becomes Parakat in your heart, but only for you, the one who is hearing we're in a mood of surrender. Mm -hmm. Everyone can hear. But if a person is not surrendered, they don't have nishta in their guru, then it will bounce off the, the sound will come and bounce off their ego. But if someone has surrendered, then this Shabda Brahma will go in their heart and Krishna Lila manifests right now. Tatchanat means immediately. Tatchanat, sadhyo, at once. The Lila manifests in our heart right now as we are hearing. So Krishna says, Chaktva deham janma puna na. Not when you die, right now, eight imam, you come to me when you realize Janma Kama Tanay Divyam Ivam Yoveti Tatoha, the absolute truth of my Leela through Shabda Brahma. Gaur Premanan.